man, just moved by the worship this morning. And oh, just so thankful and grateful to be able to bring the Word of God this morning. Um, we're going to be continuing in our Galatians series. I know we've been in Galatians for a hot minute, but we are going to continue in that. Um, I told Kiana and a couple of uh, the men that are on the pastoral staff here, um, they were like, hey, are you just going to preach from your heart this Sunday? And I said, gosh, I don't know that I can. Um, I could barely even do an ounce this morning. Um, so we're just going to keep plowing through Galatians um, because otherwise I'll become an even more emotional wreck than I already am. Um, so if you could, um, as I get myself situated here, uh, turn with me to Galatians chapter 4. starting in verse 8. So Apostle Paul, in this letter to the Galatians, addresses a crucial issue, as well, with, as, well as all of the Word of God still speaks to us today because it is living and is, and is breathing and is true. But this lesson that we'll be diving into today is about the, re the danger of returning to bondage. Lord, I just pray that we open our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God's Word as we explore these verses. So I think everyone is probably with me at this point. We are going to start by reading verses 8 through 20, and then we will go and break down them as we go through the scripture. Starting in verse 8. But in the past, since you didn't know God, you were enslaved to things that by nature are not God's. But now, since you know God, or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elements? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? You are observing special days and years. I am fearful for you, that perhaps my labor for you has been wasted. I beg you, brothers and sisters, for I also have. You have not wronged me. You know that previously I preached the gospel to you because of a weakness of flesh my physical condition, though my physical condition was a trial for you. On the contrary, you received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus himself. Where then is your blessing? For I testify to you that if possible, you would have torn your eyes out and given them to me. So then, have, you, have I become your enemy, the truth? They court you eagerly, but for no good. They want to exclude you from me so that you would pursue them. But it was, it is always good to be pursued in a good manner and not just when I am with you. My children, I am again suffering labor pains until, for you until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be with you right now and change my tone of voice what to do about you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you today seeking your wisdom and your guidance as we go through this section of scripture. Lord, we understand and realize and yearn for understanding of your word. For it is through your word we find direction, comfort, and truth. Without your guidance, we can easily be led astray. Lord, we ask you to be with us this morning as we open up the text. Holy Spirit, help us with understanding what you have for us, and let your word transform our lives. As always, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the word of God. May it continue to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Guide us and teach us so that we may live according to your will. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So there's a lot to break down in this. I'm going to cover like several of the main points that really spoke to me, and then we'll go to a conclusion at the end. For the first section of scripture in Galatians 4, 8 through 11, remembering our former slavery. In these verses, Paul reminds the Galatians of their past lives when they were enslaved to false gods and idolatry. He emphasized that they were once ignorant of the true God and his saving grace. In these verses, in, in the first three verses of this section of scripture, it tells us of a former state of slavery to false gods and idolatry. 
It emphasizes that before knowing the true and living God and experience his saving grace, we were ignorant and separated from him. These verses highlight the stark contrast between our past lives have in Christ Jesus. They serve as a reminder to be grateful for the deliverance from our former bondage and never forget the transformative power of Jesus Christ. Paul is somewhat amazed that someone would, re would turn from the freedom that Christ Jesus gives us to the bondage of sin. This freedom is exactly what gives us the status of sons and heirs, which Martin preached on last week. Before coming to faith in Christ, we were separated from God without hope and without his covenant promises. But through Christ's blood, we've been brought near and made partakers of his inheritance. So I began to ask myself, what would make someone want to return to their old way of life? Knowing what Christ has done. And I was looking back through scripture and thinking about previous sermon series that we've gone through here. And I was like, where have we seen this before? My own life. Where is whenever we first move here and we know what was coming next. Um, we were coming into this new season of life expecting, but expecting what? We didn't know. And it's right whenever COVID broke out and everything started to go into lockdown and everyone was kind of like forced into their homes and it, there was no gathering um, really at that time. This was a March of 2020. And with just being home, with out gathering with the body of believers, almost sort of scared. Um, I don't know, everyone probably remembers around that time period, whenever there was this just a huge scare factor of, well, don't go out or you're gonna get sick or don't go out because if you get sick and then you get your family sick, like it'll be your fault. And it sort of pushed us into this bondage of being stuck. But Christ had different plans. As we are looking in scripture, this reminds me of when the Israelites were freed from the Egyptians and had a longing to go back. They even mentioned that the trials that they were suffering in the wilderness were just too much to bear and they would